I want to design a circuit that outputs a zero whenever you have a month that has 31 days. Now, it seems a little odd to like output a, a zero for something for a condition that's true, but in the field of digital logic, this is called an active low circuit. Active low means you output a zero when something is true rather than outputting a one. So another way to state this is I want to output a one for months with less than 31 days. And so here is the truth table for that. I've got a binary number, a four-bit binary number representing the number of the month. I'm numbering them from zero. So January is zero up to 11 for December. Here are the four-bit codes for those months. And then here are the ones and zeros. So January has 31 days, so the output is zero. February has less than 31 days, so I'm going to output a one. March has 31 days, it gets a zero. April has 30 days, so it gets a one. And on down the chart. Just like before, in order to construct this Carnot map, we're going to focus our attention on the rows where there's a one. You also may be wondering, why didn't I just use a one for the months that had 31 days? Uh, why did I choose to make it a zero? Well, honestly, it's because the Carnot map's more interesting if you do it that way. Okay, let's make this grid. We're going to need a 4x4 four four grid because we've got four variables. Down one side, I'm going to put A, B, and across the top, I'm going to put C, D, and I'm going to do that as the, as the, um, the binary numbers because I have a nice truth table that uses binary numbers. So I'm going to make a Carnot map that uses binary numbers. Remember to do a gray code. Now we're going to put in those dots. So the first one here is in the 0, 0, 0, 1 box. So here's 0, 0, here's 0, 1. We've got a dot right there. And this next one is in the 0, 0, 1, 1 box. So that's 0, 0, 1, 1. This dot right there. The next one is in the 0, 1, 0, 1 box. The next one is in the 1, 0, 0, 0 box. And the last one is in the 1, 0, 1, 0 box. Okay, so there's our five dots. But we're actually not done. See, we had four variables as our input, A, B, C, and D, to give us a total of 12 combinations because there's 12 months. But with four binary inputs, we've actually got 16 inputs, 16 possible combinations. We're only using 12 of them. There's four of them that kind of go unused. But I'm going to go ahead and write those in. So those represent row 12, 13, 14, and 15. So those are the rows for months that don't exist. But we still kind of have to take them into account. Because you see, it's possible that we could arrive at a Boolean expression that is simpler if we take those four months that don't exist into account. What we could say is that if the input into this uh, expression was, let's say, 13 for month 13, which would be, I don't know, two months after December, um, we don't really care what it outputs. We don't care whether it's a 0 or a 1 for the output, because it'll never happen. We're never going to have a month number 13. So let's put it into the table, but let's say, look, we don't care. We don't care whether it's a 0 or a 1. I'm going to write that in as um, an x to say, you know, here's a value that I want to take into account, but I don't care whether the output is a 0 or a 1. Same thing for the other non-existent months. 
So let's transfer those x's into our Kano map and see what we get. So we've got an x on the 1100 box, which is right here. I'm going to put in an x, not a dot. And then the next one is at the 1101, 101, which is right here. And then the 1110, which is over here. And then the 1111, which is here. So it's a whole row of x's in our Carnot map. So this is called a Carnot map with don't care. It's, you can actually Google that term. And uh, that is these terms that have an x there. I don't care whether the output is a 0 or 1, because they're just never going to happen. But let's see what it does to our circles. So we're going to treat those x's as if they're a 1, if it allows us to make the circles bigger. And we're going to treat them as a 0 if we get to ignore them. So pick whether these x's are going to be 1s or 0s, or a dots or empty, whichever makes the expression simpler. So when we go and circle our dots, we got a pair here. And then for this dot here, we could either pair it up with the one above it, or we could pair it with the x below it and treat that x as though there was a dot there. Now, um, I think it's more interesting if we circle it with the dot above it. But now take a look at this dot over here in the lower left-hand corner. I could pair it up with the one to its right, which is over on the other side, um, and that would make a two by one circle. But I could I could expand it out to be a two by two circle. Grab those two x's above and treat those boxes as though there were dots there, because when I do that, I I essentially eliminate one of the variables from that term. Remember, as the boxes get bigger, the number of variables for that term gets smaller. You've probably seen that uh, as you were filling your boxes. If you have four variables in your term, they only put one dot in there. If you have three variables, you put two dots in there. And if you have only two variables, you put four dots in there. So the bigger we can make the circles, the smaller our terms become. I'm going to circle all four of these. And that should make my expression a little bit simpler. So I'm going to treat these two x's in the middle as though they were empty boxes. And I'm going to treat these two x's on the sides as though there were dots in those boxes. OK, the top circle at the, uh, the circle at the top is on the 0, 0 row. And uh, d is a 1. So that's going to be a not b not d. And then this circle, this little vertical one, is going to be where A is 0 and CD is 0, 1. So A is 0 and CD is 0, 1. And I know I'm going to have one more term. I'm just going to slide this over so I've got some space. There we go. And then finally, the large box at the bottom is A is 1. And D is 0. So A is 1 and D is 0. And then we'll just connect them up with pluses. And if we, if we hadn't done this giant box with four dots in it, if we only done the two dots, these here, we would have ended up with uh, A is 1, B is 0 and d is 0. We would have ended up with a is 1, b is 0, and d is 0. So we would have ended up with a term that had an extra variable in it. So by making the boxes bigger, we got rid of one of those variables. So I used a, uh, <clears throat> a program called Logisim, and I built that circuit. And I made this bus, see it here, with my a, b, c, and d values. And then I just pulled off the values that I needed for each one of these AND gates. And those all flow into a three input OR gate. And then here's my output. So I can punch in a binary number over here, representing the number of the month. And then this light should light up according to which uh, the number of days in the month. So this number here represents January. 
It has 31 days, so the light is off. February has less than 31 days, so the light is on. Here's March. It has 31 days, so the light is off. April has 30 days, so the light is on. And then May is 100. Light is off. June, July, August. Here's September, October, November, and then finally December. So what happens with the other months, the non-existent months? Well, here is um, month number 12, which is the one after December. It ended up being on. Here's 13, it's off. Here's 14, it's on. And then for 15, it's off. But remember, we don't care. We don't care what the output is going to be because those months just simply don't exist.